Welcome to this week's session. Okay, friends, we have to talk about this little rectangle. This is a powerful thing we put in our pockets every single day. Now, here's the thing. I am not a numbers girl. I like the words, but there are a few statistics about our phones when it comes to how we really are starved for true connection that just really speak to me. You're going to find yourself in these statistics. It's okay. We're all in this together. You ready for this? Okay. 83% of people feel uneasy leaving their phone at home. 48%, almost half of us, consider themselves addicted to their phone. And this last one, 43% label this little guy right here their most valuable possession. So then it begs the question, what do we believe about our phone? Like, if we feel like we need to have it with us, we're addicted, it's our most valuable possession, right? It sounds like we need this ever-present, all-powerful thing here. It feels like a savior, right? And listen, this has been a journey for me, (laughs) and I want us to move from finding ourselves starved for connection to really connect it to the one true thing. Because I think we often go to our phones first to find peace and joy and hope and and love and, and connection when we're overwhelmed and afraid and we're anxious and it doesn't actually deliver. We know this because we're still scrolling, we're still feeling anxious and overwhelmed, and we still come back, right? More and more and more. Listen, there's some really great qualities when it comes to phone. I, I have written half my books on my phone, on my notes, on my Google Docs, and we stay in contact with our friends, we find new communities, we can read the Bible. I, I don't think the problem is necessarily our phone. I think the problem is what our phone sells us, how it doesn't deliver, and how that's starving our souls. We're sold news and advertising that turns into fear and anxiety. We're sold airbrushed photos that turns into comparison and shame. We're sold faulty belief systems that turn into identity issues, right? They're all subtly starving our souls. So a few questions I want us to consider and think about in our time right now is if I put my phone down, do I believe that God will take care of me? Another question is, will God connect to me if I disconnect from my phone? I think that's a real fear. What happens on the other side of that silence? Like what happens if I put it all down? Will I find God? Will he care about me? Will he provide? Because I think it's really scary to give up a place where we feel very secure if we don't know who or what is going to fill that space. And I think one of the solutions is really digging into the character of God and to see, oh my gosh, yes. He can bring wholeness and peace and joy, and He does deliver. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at Psalm 23. It is an ancient, beloved psalm that men and women have been reading and meditating on for thousands of years. And it's six little verses, and it's packed with God's character. So we're only gonna look at three parts of God's character in Psalm 23. So turn to your Bible and check it out with me. This is where it starts. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need, or I shall not want, right? He makes me lie down in green pastures. Doesn't that sound good, right? He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. It makes me think our soul needs restoration. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, not ours. This is about him and his kingdom, his good, good kingdom. Then he says this, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It's really beautiful. You anoint my head with oil, my cup, overflows. We have a good God who says, I'm not only going to bring your cup to half or maybe even to the brim. No, I'm going to overflow your cup. I'm going to bring that much nourishment to you when you put it all down and come to me, right? And then verse six, surely goodness and mercy or loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right, three observations when it comes to God's character in Psalm 23. First, God is my provider. 
So if I put down my phone and I disconnect in that way, God is going to show up and shepherd and provide for me. He's my shepherd. He's going to give me care and peace and love and security and rest, right? Because we're all scrolling, but we're starving. And he's like, listen, you can find it in me. You really can. He's a good shepherd that way. Second character that we want to study about God here is that God is a restorer, which really speaks to the fact that our souls need some restoration. I know that you guys feel that. We feel anxious, we're tired, we're overwhelmed. God is gonna restore these things. He's a repairer, he's a rebuilder, this is who he is. And then the third thing is, God also is our comfort, which again, I do this. I go to my phone when I'm feeling uncomfortable, when I feel like I want someone to validate me in some way, right? But God is our comfort. And this is what he says, and it's an, it's a, it's an interesting place where he goes here. Verse four, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, I'm, I'm not a shepherd. I don't even have any shepherd friends that I could ask, so I did some digging. Here's the deal about rods and staffs. So the rod was a protecting, a protecting long stick, and it beat back all the enemies of, of the sheep, like wolves, bears, like anything that was going to threaten the sheep, that's what the shepherd would carry, to protect, which would bring comfort to the sheep, like they will be protected. And then the staff here is the, the shepherd's hook, you know, the classic hook that you see with a, with a shepherd, that if a sheep wanders off, gets stuck in some brambles or down a ravine, he takes that hook and he brings that sheep back and brings him right next to his side and is like, listen, yo, sheep, stay right next to me. Hear my voice, I've got you. I'm your comforter, you wanna stay with me. Don't, don't head off all these places. I'm your good shepherd, that's the comfort. That's who he is. So he's our provider, he's our restorer, he's our comforter. I think if we're going to put down our phone, we've gotta trust that God will be those things for us. If I shut it all down, I actually open it all up. So this week, we are going to practice silence, disconnecting from our phones to really connect to the true king. And I know that when I say that idea of silence, some of you are like, um, <laughs> that's overwhelming. I don't know what I'm going to find, Amy. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Some of you are like, yes, I want more. I've been practicing this. I want to keep doing this. Wherever you are on, on silence, I promise you, you can do this. And I think you're gonna hear from God because you're, you're making space. So I look forward to how that experiment's gonna go for you. And I will see you next time.